In today's show, we look at the five games from Tuesday in the NBA, some waiver wire trends, some injury news, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com. And you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore beeble, on TikTok at redrock underscore beeble, on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball, and Substack is joshlloyd48.substack.com. Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. As the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash LockedOnNBA. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. All right, we're going to talk news. Won't be that long of a show today. I'm guessing, I'm hoping, we'll see. Let's talk some news. Morning. Let's get it on, Gilly. <laughs> All right, the Suns are being sold. Robert Sarver is out. And we've got Matt and Justin Ishbia, I think is how you pronounce that surname. They are agreeing to buy the Suns. I think mainly Matt is the guy there. Justin, his brother, obviously, um, uh, coming in as, a, as an owner as well. They own a mortgage company. All this really doesn't matter that much for fantasy-wise, but someone did ask me the question. And we heard it from Monty Williams in a press conference today saying, hey, it probably helps us with trades. Now that we've got some certainty and ownership to tick off on that sort of stuff. So that's that's good to know. And the immediate question I got was, hey, do we run to grab Jay Crowder now that the Suns' ownership thing has been settled and they could be looking to make trades? And it never ever entered my head, honestly. But the question's there. Monty Williams said the same thing. Is Jay Crowder worth a grab? No, he's not. Like, he's not that good. If you're in a 16-team league, I can see it. I wouldn't expect Crowder to get moved until January. He's probably one of the first guys that gets moved, but I don't think it's happening in December. Um, but in 10 or 12 team leagues, I don't think it matters. Crowder, as we are all well aware, and sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. He's like a points and steals streamer. He's up and down. He hasn't played. I don't know what team he's going to. It would take a huge, weird situation of events. And apparently the favorite is Milwaukee. And he's not going to play that much in Milwaukee. Um, a huge, interesting situation for him to find the perfect spot where he gets enough usage and enough consistency and plays 33 minutes a night. I don't think any of those things are happening. So no, I wouldn't add Crowder in 10 or 12 or probably in 14 team leagues. I'd consider it in the 16 team league. And this does grease the wheels a little bit for a trade to be made because of the ownership situation. But that's about it. Updating a few things from the What to Watch For show. Giddy and Baisley are out. So the value of Isaiah Joe is there. Andy Wiggins. Not Andy. The other one. Aaron Wiggins. Azza. Aaron Wiggins. Um, you're looking at Eugene Amarui, perhaps. Alexei Pokashevsky, perhaps. I wouldn't feel good about either of those guys. Um, Kenrich Williams, the Oklahoma City Mudflap, who's been playing some pretty good basketball. They all come into deep league streaming territory stuff. Middleton is doubtful tomorrow. Okay, cool, great. So they'll probably start Beauchamp or Carter and that none of them will be useful enough. Clay and Wiggins are both out tomorrow with Steph. We haven't heard about Draymond. Looney will probably play limited minutes. So we've got, um, we don't know about DiVincenzo who missed today's game. So there's going to be ample opportunity to stream in a Moses Moody, a John Kaminga. You might even be able to crack in with Blunty James Wiseman. Because I think the expectation is that with Jermichael Green out today for COVID, he won't play tomorrow either. So I would guess that Green is going to be out. So Wiseman, who played good minutes today, wasn't necessarily big productive minutes, but there is going to be a bunch of guys out for this Warriors team. So I think you have to look at just stream options right across the board. That that would be uh, that would be my guess with that. So we'll see how that all goes. But that's that's where we sit with those Warriors injury updates. Um, interestingly, DeMontis Sabonis appeared on the injury report, as is Harrison Barnes, both questionable. The Kings have had a pretty good run with injuries. But both guys have appeared as questionable for tomorrow. If Sabonis happens to miss, I wonder if they go back to Rashawn Holmes or if it is Chemezi Metu. I think it'll be Holmes. 
just think he can hold up more as a starter versus Metu. But both guys would get some value. If we hear it is Holmes for sure, then he is a stream on Wednesday if Sabonis is out. And then uh, Wes Unsell told us that Dillon Wright, he's hopeful he's back on Thursday. What that does to the rotation, I don't know. Because there's Goodwin, there's Kispert, there's Barton, there's Morris. I don't think that Wright is an ad. There's just too many of those guys there. I don't think he comes in and demands 30 minutes a night, at least not within the next few weeks. There's just too many options there, I think. It's obviously going to destroy any Goodwin value, but we're going to see, hopefully, this Wizards team relatively fully strength. Full strength? Yeah, fully stocked, full strength. That's what I'm trying to say. Outside of Hachimura, really, really soon. So that'll be good just for an idea of how the valuations of these players go. We'll get that coming, uh, hopefully, really, really soon. Today, we are doing a quiz question. So if you are watching on YouTube, you can see the full details here. College, you can see the logo of that college team. They were drafted by the Orlando Magic. And their last team that they played for was the Sacramento Kings franchise. Because I'm going to do current players and older players. And sometimes we're talking about franchises that uh, or teams that have relocated, but it's the franchise. So I'm not trying to you know, steer you one way or another here with this one. But if I talk Sacramento Kings, I'm talking Kansas City Kings. And I'm talking wherever they were before that. I can't remember the other one where they were before that as the... Uh, anyway, you know what I'm trying to say. Lots of different... Uh, those different cities that that franchise was in. So they... Well, obviously, it's not going to be Kansas City for, for Sacramento because they were drafted by Orlando. So it's got to be you know, more recent than that. But that's what I'm trying to get at. Anyway, drafted out of that college, drafted by the Magic, last played for the Sacramento Kings. I'll answer that question later on. Drop it down in the chat if you think you know who that player is. Today's episode is brought to you by Better Help. We all have difficult challenges in life. Obviously, no one gets through scot-free. We all have things that we have to deal with. Give yourself give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash locked on. I think it's locked on or locked on MBA. Sorry, locked on MBA and get on your way to being your best self. BetterHelp is online therapy. So you have to deal with traffic. You don't have to deal with waiting rooms. It's something that we all probably need to look at at some point in our lives because there are so many challenges, economic pressures, social pressures, um, you know, medical pressures, so many things that go wrong in our lives that we have to deal with. And sometimes it's hard to do it. And we need a guiding hand. We need a helping hand. And that's what BetterHelp is there to do. They're the world's largest therapy service BetterHelp has matched 3 million people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. Plus, it is affordable. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist. And if things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It couldn't be simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on NBA. Let's go to the most added waiver wire players over the last 24 hours. Number one is the Detroit Pistons big fella. Well, little fella, actually. Alec Berg. Up 17%. Alec Burks didn't work out that well. We'll talk about it later. Patrick Williams up 16%. That's a schedule stream because he's putrid. Aaron Neesmith up 16%. That's real chasing. Yes, he's going to start. He has started three of the last four games. They haven't all been like that last one. I get it. I get the appeal. The 21 points, 75, literally the best game he's ever had, right? I think he's more of a 14-team league ad, and I think a lot of people will be disappointed, but let's see. I'm really sure that a lot of people are going to be disappointing adding Kemba Walker. He's up 14%. No reason for Kemba Walker to be rostered in a 12-team league, in my opinion. Kevon Looney up 14%. That's for this back-to-back here. We detailed him on the Buy Low, Sell High show earlier today, Who, because he's been putting up top 100 numbers. I don't think there's any way that's sticking, and we actually saw that today. Um, I get it, adding for the back-to-back. Big Dollar Depot up 12%, really good ad. Really good ad with the fact that he's played 30 minutes in three straight and they played today. Whether this persists and you know, how it looks when everyone is healthy, but the Heat apparently never have that anyway. So Oladipo has a little bit of value there. The 9% of leagues where someone picked up Emmanuel quickly, congratulations, you got a good game out of him. You don't get it all the time, but they had a really favorable schedule, so it made sense. And then Dennis Schroeder up 8%. Really like that ad with the absence of Davis and the potential absence of Russell Westbrook. By the way, still have no idea what Anthony Davis's injury is. I am getting more and more worried every day. I fear surgery. I fear end of season. I don't know that at all. 
I've got no way of knowing that because they won't tell us what the injury is. But the fact that we're just hearing nothing still five days later and I don't know, there's just there's just too much undercurrent of, oh no, oh no. There's too much of that going around where I am really panicked about what's happening here with Davis. I'm, I would not, unless it's a top 100 player, I would not try to buy low on him in the trade. I would never send a top 30 or top 50 player for Davis at the moment, given my absolute fears about what this injury could be. The most dropped player over the last 24 hours is Kyle Anderson down 14%. Yes, the back injuries are annoying. Last game before the back injury wasn't great. I don't think he deserved to be dropped. Andrew Nembhard down 11%. I do, that's fine. Larry Nance down 8 I wouldn't have dropped him. Jalen McDaniels down 8 Absolutely no problem to drop him. Yes, Terry Rozier is doubtful for tomorrow, but McDaniels is uh, totally expendable in my opinion. Najee Marshall and Will Barton down 8%. Well, Barton probably could have been held just because of the schedule. He's not a 12-team guy, nor is Naji Marshall. So they both can be dropped to like 16-team level. Alexei Pokyashevsky down 7%. Yeah, look, you just can't trust him, can you? You can't trust production. You can't trust minutes. You don't want anything to do with that, really, I don't think, at this point. And Caleb Martin down 6%. It would have been a good stream for him today. But, of course, they were injured. So we didn't... Well, he was injured, so we didn't get to see him play, unfortunately. So, yeah, absolutely fine drop for him. Let's go on to the first game of the day the Utah Jazz and the Detroit Pistons. The Jazz comfortably win this game. Final score was 126-111. Larry Markin was crazy. 36 minutes, 38 points, 9 threes. He's been phenomenal all season, 22nd ranked player. No one saw that. I knew he was good value. That's not true. I didn't know. I thought he was good value. I thought that it was ridiculous how low he was being ranked. I was picking him in the 60s and 70s. I didn't, I didn't say this. No way. Couldn't. Couldn't have said it. Well done. He's been awesome. Um, they were still without Alinek and Sexton. So they started the front court of Vanderbilt Bar and Walker Kessler. And Vanderbilt Bar went off. 32 minutes for Jared. 18, 13, and 6 with two steals and two threes. So look at this. And that's great. But do not look at this and go, wow, of course. No, Alinek is going to go off. Because look, literally one game ago. And he did absolutely nothing. So are the extra minutes because Alinek was out? Yeah, potentially. But it's also because he played well in those minutes. Because literally one game ago, he was not like this. So when I talk about his upside being low, that is a great game. That is a really high upside game. His upside is low in my opinion because he can't sustain it. He can't do this for like a two-week stretch or a three-week stretch or push to getting close to this regularly. He'll have this game and then he'll go four and three with a steal in 24 minutes and you get back down to being a back-end player. Every player, not every player, a lot of players can put up big single game performances. They can. A lot of things go their way, they can do it. Being a guy who's a low upside player, which I think Vanderbilt is, means you can't do it sustainably. You can't consistently provide these numbers to have that high upside. We're not talking one day stuff. That is what I mean when I say that. I hope that's more clear. Jordy Clarkson, 21 points in 30 minutes for the man on the street. J-O-R-D-A-N-C-L-A-R-K-S-O-N. Another six assists, but he's a bit rough from the line. While Walker Kessler, not nothing great, but 10 and nine with two blocks. 71% from the field is great. His free throws are a problem. Missed both of them here. Remains a 12-team league player. Uh, Mike Conley, the buy low is still massively in effect. I don't think we should look at him as having any big usage spike. He only had seven points, but the shooting still has room to improve. He was, what, 20% on threes again here? His shooting is really poor. The seven assists are nice. The steal's okay. He can't hit free throws anymore. If he's dropped, I would add him in 12-team leagues. Tens, I'm on the borderline. I don't know if I would. 12, I would. And I would throw my worst player to get him in a trade if they don't want to give up. I'm really confident that the shooting, usage maybe not. Shooting, I'm confident that turns around. The Kel Alexander Walker, I guess you hold him if you want just because they play Thursday, but if Sexton's returning, I don't know what he's going to do. Two points, two blocks, 19 minutes. Well, Beasley, only 25 minutes for Bees, but 17 points with three threes, and I don't know what more you could have asked for him. You asked for points and threes. He delivered points and threes. For the Pistons, big game from Jaden Ivey. Huge game. 33 minutes, 30 points, five assists, is it real? No, because he shot 71%. But what I'm encouraged with is the fact that he played 33 minutes because old mate, Dwayne Casey, was reducing his playing time and he had 33 usage. He was a bit rough from the line, 73%. We don't expect that, like that shooting 71 from the field. We don't. Of course you don't. He hit both of his um, both of his threes and was 67 from two. The five assists is encouraging. This is often a time when younger guards start to kick it up and then really fire it up mid-January onwards. The last two games have been very encouraging from Rivey. I don't know that it means moving forward he's going to be great. 
I don't know that. I know that he has been and remains a 12-team must roster points league guy. Category leagues, he hasn't been because he's been nowhere near this. But the last two games show me a flick. It's a turnaround. So if he was there, yeah, take a crack. Have a, have a look. I'm not convinced that it sticks because, again, that shooting is not real. But this was great. I think Jalen Duran's pretty real. We finally got here. Him as a starter. Now, there's not much here. There's 15 and 14. That's great. 14 rebounds. Double-digit rebounds every game, apparently, from Andre Drummond, too. But no steals, no blocks, no assists. 78 from the field is good. He is top 50 over the last week. He is, you know, I think he can be top 100 rest of season. He's a must-roster player. Boyan had 15 points with not much more there, while Bagley had 10 in 18 minutes. It's the, it's the Marvin Bagleyest of Marvin Bagley lines. 10 and 4 with no threes, assists, steals, or blocks. Good. Good for him. Not a 12-team league guy, pretty clearly. Three bad games in a row from Killian Hayes. Four points on 25%. Hate it. 26 minutes. Hate it. Five assists. I do like. I am holding in 12-team leagues, though, but we'll just keep, always, we always keep reassessing. And then Alf Stewart really struggled. Is that you, Mr. Stewart? Well, who the hell else do you think it'd be? Get in here, you pair of flaming galahs. Um, I Much like when I talk about the low upside play of a Jared Vanderbilt, I think Stewart's that as well. Seven and three. He had a block. He didn't hit a three. He's 122nd this season. Not sure there's any top 100 upside there with him. 10 team league, I wouldn't bother. 12, he probably is a hold. But what's, what's the good that comes of it? I don't know how high the upside is. I know that I'm not holding Sadiq Bay. Seven points in 20 minutes with five rebounds. The depressed penis has really struggled. He's outside the top 350 over the last week. He's 195th for the season. I was never high on Bay, but it was definitely not this low. I didn't think I didn't think that they would just basically give up and turn him into Kevin Knox. I, I didn't think that would happen. It has happened. I knew that he was... Again, I didn't know. I presumed, hey, Boy and Bogdanovich arriving, this is terrible for Bay's value, right? So push him outside your top 100. But I didn't foresee him getting benched and playing 20 minutes a night and struggling in those minutes. I did not foresee that at all. Today's episode is also brought to you by betonline.net. Betonline.net is... What was I trying to say? Yeah, betonline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, whether that's the NFL, college bowl season, college basketball, or the NBA. They've got it all covered at betonline.net, which is the fastest and easiest way for, for you to get your betting info. The San Francisco 49ers, they're hosting the Commanders on Christmas Eve. The 49ers have the longest win streak in the NFL. Seven games, I believe it is. Can they keep it going with Brock Purdy? Seven-point favorites against the Commanders. 39 over under, that's very low, but we know the defense of the 49ers is great. But if you want to check out all of the NFL action, week six, 16 stuff? Yeah, week 16. This I know it is week 16. I'm confident it's week 16 now. You can go check it out at betonline.net. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline is where the game starts. Don't forget to gamble responsibly. Second game, the Chicago Bulls. After these reports of locker room arguments, discussions, blow-ups, they beat the really Miami Heat 113-103. A couple of things to look at from the Bulls' perspective. Um, Javante Green remains sidelined. So, of course, with Green still out, we've got Patrick Williams starting and doing nothing. Six points on 25% shooting. He continues to be bad and not worth the 12-team roster spot. 14s at best. Odesumu, who they decided would be their starting point guard in the preseason, is now out of the rotation. He had one point in five minutes. I was way lower on him than others, and I just don't think he's good. Simple as that. Like, I have no... He shouldn't be in the rotation. I don't think he's very good. So there you go. Go and drop him in 12 and 14 team leagues. Vooch, the sell high absolutely continues for Vooch. It's Vooch. It's big Vooch. Vooch is it. Vooch a bitch. We detailed this in the show earlier today, the buy low sell high, saying how high his field goal percentage was. Another 77% game. 29 and 12 with three threes in 37 minutes. That is huge sell high stuff. Massive sell high territory. Levine had 21, 6 and 7, while DeRozan had 24, 5 and 5. Good games from all of those players. Well, Caruso, only 23 minutes because Kobe White played more than him. Now, Caruso did the thing that he does, and that's get steals. 7, 6, and 3 with 3 steals. And if you want steals, he's useful. If you don't, he's useless. That's where you sit with him. Well, Kobe White, don't look now, but he's climbing up. 24 minutes, 14 points, 3 threes. I'm not advocating Kobe White as anything more than a streamer, but probably 14 team leagues. But he's coming up. He played more minutes than Dragic, more minutes than Caruso. In fact, more minutes than every point guard on this roster. 
He still has plenty of deficiencies. He's never going to get big assists. He's a usage player on a team full of usage players. But the minutes are there. And if you're looking for three-point streaming, especially in like 16-teamers, White has to be on your radar now. Derek Jones Jr. was the backup center. Again, he had a one of the bad Richie Benos. Two for two, two, two. Two points, two rebounds, two assists, but he sprained his ankle. So Andre Drummond, the big avocado, came in and scored one point. He is also out of the rotation, Drummond. Yeah, he is. For the Heat, they had no Lowry, no Butler, no Martin, no Vincent. So they started a lineup of Victor Oladipo, Tyler Hero, Max Struess, Hayward Highsmith, and Bam Adebayo. Bam was able to take full advantage of this. 27, 12, and 6, good numbers. Highsmith also, 41 minutes, 18, four threes, four steals. Good game, 70% shooting. But is any of this real? I don't think so. Because honestly, there's four, at least th- there's three starters out and a fourth rotation piece out in Vincent. So these minutes aren't realistic. Is he a better option than Caleb Martin at the four? He might be. I don't think he's going to get that chance though. We just remember that if streaming opportunities arise, here he is. Hero had 19, 3, and 7 with four threes, another strong game. While Oladipo, three straight 30-plus minute performances. 14 points on 31% shooting is not good, but he had another two steals. He had two threes. The absences, the fact that he's playing better than Max Struess already, means he's at least on the 14-team league radar, Vic. And he, he might be a 12. He's a top 100 over the last week, Vic. Again, situations because of so many players that are out. But there's always some dickhead out on this team. So... I don't think he's going to be a starter, but Victor Oladipo is at least... Hey, he's in flyer territory. Like in a 12-team, I go, ah, maybe we'll see. I like it still more for 14, but it's there for 12. The Winter Soldier had four points. Max Struess on 11% with six assists. You don't want him on 12-team league rosters. And Duncan Robinson played 36 minutes because everyone was out. He's been hitting threes and playing minutes. And like with Oladipo, if these guys remain out, if you're looking for threes, much again like Kobe White on the other team, Looking for someone to stream in for two, three, four triples a game, yeah, Duncan can provide that. He might not play when everyone gets healthy, but for the moment, while there are players out, there is some value in him. The Warriors and the Knicks, just an absolute ass kicking this one. 132 94 final score, the Knicks win it. Jordan Poole had 26 with nothing else. John Kaminga played 27 minutes, had 13, 4, and 4, and 71%. He was really helped by Wiggins being out, obviously, Steph being out, obviously, but also DiVincenzo being out. That helped him. And there's an opportunity for him to do all this again tomorrow. And also, Jermichael Green out helped him. Also helped um, Blunty, Jim's wi- Jim Wiseman. He was a team worst minus 29. He played 22 minutes, but he had four points with two blocks. And if he gets 20 odd minutes tomorrow, there is stream value in that. Now, he, they'll probably get smashed, but there is stream value. We talked about Kavon Looney how his numbers were really elevated in the buy low, sell high. He had two, six, and four in 21 minutes, while Clay was also really bad in this game, I thought. 11 points, 42% shooting, turned the ball over a lot. Not much else there. He had a nice little hot streak that bumped him back up, but he's cooled way off again. And he's still not a top 100 player this season. And in points leagues, he's 106th. He's still holding him, but that little surge that he had where he was top 50 for about three or four weeks has cooled back off. Ty Jerome played 24 useless minutes. He had 11, zero, and three. In that, and Draymond had seven, five, and six. The buy low is still available for him, especially if he does sit tomorrow, which I would think would be the expectation. If anyone could predict Emmanuel quickly, please let me know. You've got no way of doing it, right? 23 minutes, which is what he plays every night. Some nights he'll score seven. Today he scores 22 with five threes, two steals, a block, four rebounds, 60% shooting. That's excellent. 30 usage, great stuff. Every single player on the Knicks, by the way, positive plus minus. Don't say that very often. Um, this is great from quickly. Their schedule is really positive moving forward here for this week at least. But after that, like you can't trust it game by game. Quentin Grimes sprained his ankle but returned, played 32 minutes. Of course, the guy that sprained his ankle plays the most minutes out of everybody. 19 points with four threes. Low usage again. Good shooting again. No defensive stats. Last game, it was no scoring but high defensive stats. It's all it's one or the other. He's a 12-team league player at the moment. He's really exceeding expectations. I still have some shooting percentage skepticism. But he's been great. Roster him. The double royal Julius Randle played 30 minutes in this one. <laughs> 15, 12, and 5, but subpar on his percentages. Well, Brunson had 21, 3, and 5. And uh, speaking of subpar and percentages, Ron Barrett, 42 from the field and 1 of 2 from the line. 18, 3, and 5 is not terrible. We know he was starting to creep up a little bit, but he's fallen back off. He's 179th for the season, 168th over the last week. He's still top 100 in points leagues. And you can have value in him in a 12-team category league if 
your team is structured the right way and you're probably not caring too much about those percentages because he's scoring is really valuable. The problem is the negatives he brings in those other areas. Let's go to the next game. Washington and Phoenix. The Wizards get the win on the road. It's an up and down game. They win at 120, sorry, 113, 110, the final score. There was no Porzingis or Delon Wright or Rui Hachimura. Porzingis is out with an illness. Right, they both could be back next game, which is Thursday, I believe, for the Wizards. Kuzma, 37 minutes, 29, 6 and 6, 5 threes and 2 steals. That's really good from Kuzma after having some issues with percentages over the recent games. He was pretty good, apart from 4 of 6 from the line. With Porzingis out, we got more Denny Avdi minutes, and he responded with a big game. 16, 10 and 4, 36 minutes. He really gets lost when they've got a fully healthy starting lineup, mainly because his minutes get reduced as well. But when someone's out, whether it's Beal or Porzingis, he seems to step up and move into stream territory. Brad Beal had 27, 6, and 6. A rough shooting night, but good nonetheless. Well, Monte Morris, I didn't expect 36 minutes out of Monte. 9 points, 3 assists. Well, I didn't really get 36 minutes worth of stats, did I? He got 3 steals and a block. The 36 minutes is intriguing, but Delon's back next game. And how they in- integrate all of that, I-, I don't know. His numbers still remain highly, highly underwhelming. He's not top 150 this season, Monte. And I don't think you regret if you drop him. Dan Gafford started 12 and 9. Like, that's totally just okay. The two of six from the line is bad. We stream him. Porzingis is back. You drop him. Jordan Goodwin. Um, I think you feel really good about dropping him, to be honest. Get that garbage out of here! Two points in 12 minutes. It's not going to get better when Delon's back. I know there was so much copium with him, man. Whoa, well, he's better than Monte. He should play 30 minutes a night. It just... It just wasn't going to happen. It just was so unlikely to happen. You got that, you squeeze that little bit of value out of him. That was great. And it's going to fall away. Same with uh, old mate Will Barton. No, you, Will. No, he's ready to sack that. Run, Will. Give it off quick. Six points with two threes. He has no business being rostered. These two guys are rostered in a ton of leagues, way too many. And that is, if, you have, if you're one of those people who have Will Barton or um, Jordan Goodwin, you can likely move on. But in saying all of that, there's not many teams that play on Thursday. And the Wizards are one of them. So if you do have them, you can save an ad to use a player who might play 20 minutes. It might not be much. I'd rather Avdia. But do you want to waste an ad to grab the guy on Thursday, remembering that there's no Thursday, Sunday back-to-back? There's no th- no team plays Thursday and Sunday. So you can't get, well, I'll drop him and I'll get a two-for-one in there. You can't. Your only two-for-one is holding a Wizards player or... Um, you're one of those other guys that plays on the Tuesday, Thursday. I think it's only the Jazz who have that Tuesday, Thursday combo. That they're the only options that you have there to hold through and not waste a waiver move. So you've got to consider that. Right? You might have plenty of waiver moves you can do it. And if you can, like these guys aren't, when I say they're not, like Goodwin and Barton aren't long term 12 team league guys. It's like at the end of this week, like a, they don't matter. But if you're talking about preserving value, preserving waiver wire acquisitions, you've already got them. They played Thursday. Maybe that's worth a hold. It, it might not be, but maybe it is. They also play on Friday, but you wouldn't start them on the Friday because they're not good enough to do that. But that is always a consideration. So when I'm talking generally about a droppable guy, it's about looking forward. It's about where do I see this guy as we move forward? Like schedule independent stuff. Maybe you wait a day because it makes sense to hold them for that one more game. But when you look forward, then they become totally expendable. But if, for example, a Jalen Duran or a Walker Kessler or a Tom Bryant's on the waiver wire, then I don't care about holding on to Jordan Goodwin or Will Barton so I can get 20 minutes out of him on Thursday. It doesn't matter. But if I'm doing it, so if I drop them and then I stream someone else in on that Thursday, well, what's the point? I hope all of that made sense to you. I hope so. For the Suns, no different Booker again. So they started Damian Lee, but it was Landry Shamit instead that got the big minutes. 18 minutes for Lee for two points. 35 minutes for Shamit. He went crazy. 31 points with nine threes for Shamit. Nine. 21 shot attempts. 28 usage. Five assists. Probably the best game he's ever played. There will be, I assure you, tomorrow, most added players, Landry Shamit. He will be on that list. And you you don't need to do that. I don't know how long Devin Booker is going to be out. Um, But we literally saw last game, Booker was out and Shamit did nothing like this. He's never done this ever before. This was great. Booker's injury is not a long-term thing. The Suns, when do they next play? Friday with 14 games on, and they have a low volume on Christmas Day against the Nuggets. So I'd expect Booker plays on on Sunday, and even if he does play Friday against the Grizzlies, is Shamit, that's not repeatable, and is he going to be worth it? I don't think so. 
But people will go and add him, I guarantee you, because they see a big game and they chase it. It happens all the time, all the time. So just assess your individual situation. Chris Paul, 36 minutes, 12, 4, and 11. Chop poorly, 27%. Copped a whack in the shoulder and went down like he was dead. But he played through it, but we have to just watch that one. Ayton had 30 and 13 in 32 minutes, while the Mikhail Bridges by low is still there. 10, 3, and 3 in 39 minutes because he shot 36 from the field. He was 1 of 2 from the line and no defensive stats. He is falling off really quickly. Now, you know I wasn't a big guy to pick Bridges in the top 50. He wasn't not exciting enough for me. He had him around the 70 mark. He's been ahead of that, but it is falling away. But I still think that, look, if someone really... People get annoyed. When someone has a bad shooting night, oh my God, this bum is killing me. You've got to find those sort of players or those guys who react to those. In, like, man, I can't hold this guy. He's just killing my field guys. Well, it might be for a week or two. I don't know. That's where you try and get the buy low. And if you can't get the buy low, oh, well, who cares? You deal with it. Move on. Get the next guy. Work the wire. Do whatever else you need to do. But the value for Bridges is way lower than what I think it's going to be as we move forward. Landau was out, so Biombo got the 16 backup minutes, 7 and 5 for him. But of course, with Aiton playing, there's no real value there for Bismarck. And now we do the last game of the night. The Grizzlies and the Nuggets in Denver. Denver wins it. Final score, 105-91. Ja Morant played 38 minutes. He did hurt his hand. It looked like, well, maybe that's not great. But he played through it, so let's watch that. 35 points, 10 assists, 3 threes, 46 from the field, 80 from the line. Really good numbers all the way around there for Ja, who had... Been struggling with some of his percentages, so this is good to get that sort of game in. Jaron Jackson had a lot of foul trouble. 22 minutes with five fouls. He had eight points only, but three steals and five blocks. So it doesn't actually matter that he had foul trouble. That line's still ridiculously good. Dylan Brooksy Brooks started out horribly, but ended not bad. 11, 7, and 1, 36%, which for him is actually a win. Three steals. He is a 12-team league guy while Bain remains out, but unfortunately, Lil John Conchar isn't. What? No, it's true. He played only 16 minutes and went scoreless as Tyus Jones played 30. Five points only for Tyus, but the 30 minutes is what's intriguing. Five points, five rebounds, four assists. We've been talking about Tyus as that extended stash guy who can get some minutes in this situation, who gets some minutes, the games that Jar sits, and if you're in a strong position, holding him on your roster can make some sense because you don't need him every game, you coast anyway, and you get that top 60 value if Morant sits. So that was a good one. Steven Adams had four points with 10 rebounds in 30 minutes. Okay, nothing exciting there. We know that he's not an exciting Category League fantasy player. He still should be rostered by somebody. Well, Brandon Clark doesn't need to be. Only 16 minutes, 10 and 5. He still rostered way too many spots. So is Santi Aldama, who had 6 and 3 with 14 minutes. Aldama couldn't even get big playing time with Jackson in foul trouble. There is no reason to hold Santi Aldama in 12-team leagues, and I don't think there's any reason to have Brandon Clark in 12-team leagues. David Roddy Piper played 23 minutes for eight points. Not sure why the Grizzlies are feeding so many minutes into him. I don't really see it. He was bad with percentages. He's obviously not providing fantasy value, but he's out there getting minutes. Good for him. For the Nuggets. You don't see many of these games. Nikola Jokic played 37 minutes, had 13 points, 13 rebounds, 13 assists, and he was a plus 13. It was great. He had another crazy highlight pass through the legs on a like behind the, I don't know. It was just stupid. I'm sure you've seen it. Crazy behind, uh, through the legs pass from Jokic. He was given the ball and he sort of like tunnel balled it straight underneath him. There you go. Aaron Gordon continues his strong run. 24, 7 and 4, two steals and a block. He has been really impressive this season. I didn't think that Gordon had this in him. I think Porter will impact him somewhat, but he's, he's, a, he's a go. He's really good. The Shark played 35 minutes. Bruce Brown, 16, 5, and 4 with two blocks. Remains really strong until Porter comes back, which might be next game. Might be the one after, but we assess that when he's actually back. And then they made a change. They brought Christian Brown in with Jamal Murray out. As you know, as Mark Jackson notes, that Bruce Brown is exclusively a power forward. Bruce Brown started a point guard today. Christian Brown came in, played 29 minutes, 13 points, two threes, steal a block, three rebounds. I just thought he was really good. As a role player, size, hustle, defensive guy, he he was really impactful for this team. Does he impact fantasy? Well, not unless you're in a very deep league, but we've been talking about watching him for deep leagues for a little bit of time. I think that if you're in a 16 or an 18 team, there's worth, worth looking at there. But of course, when Porter comes back, the value proposition misses. And Murray was out here too. Bones played 15 minutes. I think you can jack him. There's just too much up and down. 12 points is good. 
15 shots in 15 minutes is insane. 27% is horrific. It wasn't the five-minute production from Bron- uh, Bones, from Bones Highland here, but that's three games in a row under 20. Brown's getting more minutes. The other Brown's getting more minutes. Murray and Porter got to come back in. Uh, yeah, hard to get excited. Zeke Naji got minutes over DeAndre Jordan. Good. Hurt his ankle, but was able to return. I thought he played well, even though the stats don't really give us much. Interestingly, we only got one minute and 38 seconds of Ish Smith. In past games, the doctor would have just gone, ah, oh, we've got to give Ish 25 minutes. Uh, that didn't happen, and Bones still played only 15 minutes, and that is another indication why I am just out on Bones for 12-team leagues this season. Let's look at the lines of the night. The monstrous is Lowry Markinen. Your waiver wire line of the night is Emmanuel Quickly. Your young gun of the night is Jaden Ivey, and his teammate, the depressed penis, is the dud of the night. Top 10 players in category leagues. Number one is Lowry Markinen, followed by Vooch, Bam Adebayo, DeAndre Ayton, Emmanuel Quickly, Nikola Jokic, Kyle Kuzma, Landry Shamet, Denny Avdia, and Jared Vanderbilt. Your top 10 players rostered in under 50% of leagues. Quickly was one. The schedule's great. That's reason enough to try it, but you never know what's going to happen, right? It's just so up and down. Landry Shamet, awesome. No. Haywood Highsmith, really good as well. It needs multiple injuries for that to mean anything. Alex Caruso, steel streamer. John Kaminga, I like him for a stream tomorrow. Victor Oladipo, he's probably worth an ad, to be honest. Um, the minutes are really encouraging. Taj Gibson, no. Rudy Gay, absolutely not. Christian Brown, deeper leagues. And Kevin Knox, playing decent basketball. Deeper leagues, you want to have a look at him. Points leagues. Number one was Jokic, followed by Kuzma, Markinen, Bam Adebayo, Bradley Beal, Jared Vanderbilt Bar. Aaron Gordon at 7, Vooch at 8, Aiton at 9, and Ja Morant at 10. And the answer to the question, the player who was drafted out of Gonzaga was drafted by the Orlando Magic, and the last team he played for was the Sacramento Kings, is DeMontis Sabonis. He never played a game for the Magic, but he was drafted by the Magic, and he was traded along with Victor Oladipo for Serge Ibaka. But he was drafted by the Magic, and his current team, of course, is the Sacramento Kings. That'll do it for me today. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app here on YouTube. Please thumb it up. Leave those comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.